So my presentation to the Champions of Change is making calendula salve. It's a very simple and easy recipe. It's going to make you feel happy, especially if you grow them. I'll see you inside. Hello, my name is Davina Marcus, and this is Aki. I am the founder and executive director of Lucia Lyceum of Universal Teachings of Earth's Ancestors. We are a small grassroots nonprofit organization established on our property here in Crescent City, Del Norte County, California. We advocate for indigenous life ways and well beings through workshops, presentations, and land based gatherings in our gardens. I am so honored by Sunny Baker's invitation through CalFresh Healthy Living to participate with Champions of Change. I want to offer you an example of our calendula relative in its dried form. So our friend here, our calendula, has been a participant in many ancient civilizations, though its origins are unknown. So I assume that our relative here, this beautiful flower, has been on the planet for a very, very long time, which makes me want to honor it as a really respected elder. And I have a fondness for calendula flowers in my gardens because they grow so well by seed, and I really do enjoy planting everything by seed. They're also from the sunflower family, and perhaps that's why I feel so happy when I see them with their gorgeous bright orange and yellow, golden yellow, popping up into the garden. I really do believe my garden is happy because of that. They also, on a practical level, they help deter harmful insects into our garden, from our garden, that go into our garden. And also, they help to promote happy, healthy, beneficial pollinators for our garden. And also, one delectable thing for you culinary people is that their petals and their leaves are edible. So for my presentation, I'm going to focus on their medicinal attributes for the benefits of making a salve. They have been known, the calendula has been known to be used as a poultice for swelling and their oils are beneficial for cuts and scrapes and irritated skin. And they've been known to today in contemporary society be used in cosmetics to help our skin stay healthy. So I hope you're excited to come into the kitchen with me so we can start to make our calendula salve. Welcome to my kitchen. So to make a calendula salve, you only need two ingredients, but they're important. So the first ingredient that's very quite essential is your calendula oil. And you have to make your calendula oil from your garden. So you have to take your, your dried flowers, put them in a glass container, and fill it with some base oil. Now choose an oil that your skin likes. My skin likes virgin olive oil, grapeseed oil, and olive oil. But the most economical to make a bit of salve, I like to get the virgin olive oil. So this is what it's filled with to the very top of virgin olive oil. Then what you do is seal it very tightly and put it in a place that is cool, dry, and dark for six weeks. Yes, six weeks. This is what I did with this. Now there's another method, a heat method that speeds up the process that some people use. And what you do is you would place your jar in a, um, a pot that is simmering or a crock pot 
that is simmering with no um, higher temperature than 170 degrees. And you will keep that in that bath for 12 hours. And then it's good to go. I just like the good old traditional method. So that's what I did. I use that. So what happens is that you will, when it's done with it, your infusion, is you will take some cheesecloth and place it over a bottle or um, a bowl and filter the oil through and leave the petals behind. But you can squeeze the rest there, that's with the petals, and you will end up with this beautiful ambered colored calendula oil. And you can still smell the flowers. And that hissing is my water boiling for the process. So the other ingredient is beeswax, natural beeswax. You can buy it in these cubes. And they, um, I figured that they're about a quarter cup for each cube. And uh, that's what I'm using for this recipe. But you will need to chop it up into smaller pieces so they melt better. You can buy the petals or the um, pellets. Uh, in the market as well, honey, uh, excuse me, bee, I'm thinking of bees, <laughs> the, um, the wax. This is just much more economical and I really do like also the bars letting me know that this is just as much as what I need. Now that's it, that's all you need. But some of us like to add other ingredients that are oh so yummy, so I chose shea butter. I like shea butter. It's so luscious on the skin. And I use two tablespoons here. And you can also use cocoa butter as well. Now that's it, but you can go on a little farther. I know that a lot of us use, I've been using essential oils for years. And one that I'm going to add for this, uh, this um, recipe is heliochrysum. Now, heliochrysin is also from the sunflower family, and heliochrysin is, is just incredible benefits for the skin. It's another ancient flower. It grows um, wonderfully in Africa, in the Mediterranean. The ancient Romans used them, used the um, heliochrysin. I just recently got seeds, so next year I'm going to be hopefully making heliochrysin sap but I'm going to add that. And finally, this will last about a month, um, but you can also add vitamin E to extend its life. And it's a natural preservative and it's also wonderful for the skin. So that's your ingredients. Your tools, you'll need a pot. I have a pot here on the stove that is not quite boiling yet, but it's getting hot. And I use only this pot for my garden and um, herbal remedies and such. I don't use my kitchen tools. I'm also using old-fashioned uh, double boiler. So you never want to put your oils directly over the heat. So you're going to boil the water, we're going to boil the water, and then we're going to put the, everything in this double boiler. And so what are we going to put them in? Well, I brought these little, these little tins uh, usually you'll find um, these tins in a one ounce size and most cosmetics, makeup and creams are usually one ounce. This one is two ounces because I always like a little bit more. I like abundance and so I have the two ounces and I love the color. It's fun and um, cute. So this is it. And so once this gets boiling, we're going to continue on with making the sap. So I'm going to now place, this is really tricky, um, my oil in the double boiler. And my bees uh, wax. and the shea butter. And I use a um, 
a little spatula to move this around to stir because it doesn't absorb the oils where wooden spoon would. I love to cook with, um, with wooden spoons, but this is a better uh, way of not taking away your oils from your recipe. So we're going to let that dissolve. As you can see, the water is boiling underneath. And once it's dissolved, we'll pour it in the container. I filled all of our six two ounce tins with the solution. I added the vitamin E and the heliochrysin essential oils right after the solution was taken off the double boiler. I did not include it here because I knew it would take up more time than I already have. So here they are, the beautiful calendula salve in the tins. I hope you got something out of this. I enjoy doing it. I am not the technical person that I would like to be, but it was wonderful to share with you and be a part of Champions for Change. Thank you so much and enjoy your gardening in the new season.